I thought I'd walk you through a really cool preset that I built, kind of like a special effect sort of thing that I've gotten a lot of use out of lately. This is a preset that allows me to play bass lines and a guitar part at the same time. Now you do have to be pretty careful with the chord voicings that you choose to pick and you've got to be pretty clean with your left hand. So I'll talk about that technique uh, and what your limitations are later in the video. For now, here's how I built the, the preset. I'm just using actually one of the older pitch blocks, which is not polyphonic, although somehow, check this out. It's tracking pretty well, right? And I'm playing sevens here. Ordinarily, the Helix has a real hard time tracking that interval in particular. Let's see. We can hear a little bit of malfunctioning on seconds, but uh, the whole goal is that you're playing a bass line with chords. So what we really have to do is just separate the bass line with the rest of the chord by, I'd say, about an octave, and you're going to be okay. So the mechanics of the preset, and this is how it's built. Uh, start here. So when you create your A and B path, you're going to want to select split crossover and then set the frequency to 95 hertz. Now this is a, a parameter you can change a little bit. I have it set up so that um, everything in the lower octave of my guitar is shifting down the octave. And as I get about to this G, it starts fading away. You can hear, right? Uh, so I decided on 95 hertz. However, if you want a little bit more range or less range, then you can tune this in yourself. Here are the settings for the pitch block. So basically, I just have interval 1 heading down an octave plus 2 cents, interval 2 heading down the octave minus 2 cents. Gives a little bit more of a, a wider sound. Uh, and I also introduced a delay to the second path there. Then we're going into a limiter. I've set up the Rochester compressor with the ratio set to infinity. That's going to be a limiter. And here are my settings. Again, the threshold you're going to want to tune depending on how much output your pickups have. Uh, if you've got a single coil guitar, lower the threshold to maybe like negative 34 or so. If you've got hotter output humbuckers than this one is, these are like PAF style humbuckers, pretty low output, uh, then you'll want to raise the threshold maybe like 25, 24, 22-ish. Uh, active pickups even higher. And then on to the A path, this is where you're going to do your guitar processing. So the B path handles everything bass, A path is for guitar. Maybe if you're on one of the bigger Helix units, you can have the B path, you know, have an amp simulation on it for bass if you want that. Uh, I'm on the HX Stomp, so DSP is a little bit limited. Uh, so I just have one of my favorite amp models here, which actually hardly takes any DSP, I realized. Uh, this is the Jazz Chorus model, of course, and there's all my settings for that. Uh, and then any other effects you might want to add in. I have my effects loop, which heads on to some modulation uh, and wet effects on my pedal board down here. I don't want the bass effect being sent through that. I don't want to have a huge reverb or a delay on my bass sound. So I just put the effects loop uh, before the two paths meet back here. And then maybe a little bit of reverb to tie it all together. Maybe you could put in uh, the LA comp at the end of the chain. That's always a good tool to use. Okay, so there's the whole preset, right? Nothing too crazy. Uh, it did take me a little bit of messing around to find all the right settings in the pitch block and, and, and all this and the split crossover, but this is, this is just the preset. So let's talk a little bit about how we have to tune our playing uh, to make the most out of this and, and have it track the best. Like I was saying, it can handle sevenths or sixths and fifths. Um, however, I get the feeling the more notes you're adding, it could get a little wonky. Uh, the general rule of thumb, like I mentioned before, is just keep an octave between your bass note and where the rest of your chord is starting. And that works uh, almost flawlessly, anyway. Uh, you're just probably still going to experience a little bit of glitching. Uh, so if you're, if you're doing this, if you're someone that's playing like a solo acoustic guitar, this might be kind of hard to do with open chords. Uh, for example, this G chord. hard time getting that to track reliably because we have a third here all the way in the lower register of the guitar yeah you can hear it flipping out there uh, so I would suggest like for this G chord I just mute the A string with your middle finger so then your notes are actually just the G the D G B and G again uh, how about for this E minor chord I would say play an E minor without this B added, yeah, it's tripping up a little bit. So just kind of play with your middle finger there and mute the A string if you can. Uh, the easiest thing, actually, is if you're proficient with using a pick and fingers, what do they call that, hybrid style? I always mess it up. Um, 
makes sense to play the bass note with your pick and then the rest of the chord, you know, claw style. So there it is. Hope this video was helpful to you. If you dug it, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. Hopefully it'll help recommend this video to more people uh, and we can kind of grow this community together. If you're new to the channel, I do a ton of Helix videos. Uh, there's going to be a playlist here where you can check out some more tutorials and stuff. Maybe consider subscribing if you're into that. And I also wanted to mention that this preset, although all the settings were you know shown through the screen, I don't want to make you pay for something if you don't want to. I've included this preset in a bundle that I've put together with 80 plus other presets that I've done videos on. Uh, and there's actually 20 custom impulse responses in there now as well. Uh, so it's just a huge folder that I'm always adding to. The updates are always free. Uh, there's always usually a tutorial associated with them. So if you're a new Helix user, this is usually a great uh, a bundle to get a hold of. There's a ton of acoustic guitar stuff, presets for bass, presets for electric guitar with humbuckers or single coils, uh, jazz guitar presets, and then also a ton of violin stuff. It's just a good way to jumpstart your entire collection. I'm not saying everything's going to be useful to you or will fit your playing style, but there's going to be a good number where you can, you know, just take it, drag it, and drop it into your unit, see how it is, tweak it to your liking, or if you're on one of the larger Helix devices, the good news is taking an HX Stomp preset into your device, you're now going to have a ton of extra space just to add to it. Uh, so this is just my way of, of kind of trying to recoup some time that I've put into these videos. Uh, anyway enough talking. Hey, I'm going to leave you with a session that I recorded. It's just myself and a vibraphone. There's no additional instruments. Um, just where I was using this preset in kind of like an ambient cinematic uh, instrumental context. And yeah, you'll just get to hear me use this preset. So anyway, take care. See you in the next video.